I'm a currently technical specialist for Autodesk. And what I have shown here was a demo showing that we can use Maya and 3ds Max to get all the motion capture that Xsense developed. Any actor can do it and import into your own characters so you can use it for games, visual effects, anything that you want. The first section of my presentation was how to bring character generator characters. That's a nice tool that we have to generate characters in a free way, in a really artistic way. So I have imported into Maya as a FBX file and I have like uh, generate a, a new character system using Human IK. Human IK just breaks my character in a really automatic way and receive my FBX file from Xsense, which is the motion capture file and retargets the animation into my own character. I'm gonna open the Ryan Soldier, like I told you. Do -do -do. I need to, wow, yes, that's here, and my textures are here. How can I apply a motion capture here? First of all, I need to use Human IK inside Maya. Human IK is the way we can retarget animation from a motion capture device inside Maya. So I have opened the Human IK. I'm gonna look for my character. My character has already been done here, Human IK. And now I will import the animation from Xsense. So I have some animations that was previously done. I have the patrol, so I have the FBX. The first thing you have to have in mind here, when you import animation, you have to add animation, not add an update. Otherwise, it's gonna mess your bones. So I will import my FBX animation. I can increase for, for example, 400 and watch the whole loop of my animation. And the good point of the Xsense software, it can replace the first frame, the frame number zero, into a T-pose character. This is really important in order to position and doing all the retarget. So I'm creating a, a zero frame here, and check it out, my animation is just replaced with a T-pose. After doing that, the first thing I need to do is recognize these bones inside human IK. So I will create a new skeleton definition with the accent skeleton which is really way really easy to use and really compatible with human IK. Just click human IK, click OK and Maya will understand everything about this motion capture file done by accents. Okay? So now I've got my animation recognized by Maya. I've got my character here that was done automatically and now I will retarget my character with motion capture. Check it out. Now I have my character and my motion capture. Really cool, really easy to use. Amazing way to work with motion capture and Maya. Now I'm gonna open 3ds Max and show you guys how to do that. We have like two ways to bring that up. We have two ways to use motion capture files inside 3ds Max. We have Bipad and we have Cat, which is Character Animation Toolkit. Okay, I have opened 3ds Max. I'm gonna open my character here using Bipad. I'm a, I'm a huge soccer fan, so I'm gonna use this character that I had created in Character Generator. So I have a here my, my character, he's already rigged, he's already skidded, ready to be used for motion capture. So first of thing, I have to import my motion capture file done by Xsense again inside 3ds Max. The first thing I, I have to have in mind that I need to create a new bipad so I won't spoil, I won't mess my previous bipad here. So I will apply a motion capture into a new bipad and then apply to any existing character that I want. So I have my character here. I will go for motion capture shelf, which is inside bipad, and look for the motion capture files. Next, I'm gonna look for the patrol, the same file that I have done in Maya. I will open it and say to 3ds Max to deal with everything automatically. I don't wanna do anything else. It's really easy, 
my motion capture just opened here and 3ds max didn't recognize the rotation from my hand so that's why it's really important to export from access software the first frame as a t-pose so i can i know how t-pose is i can fix my character here my hands once it's done it's ready to be used into my character I said adjust my talent pose and apply it to whole animation. Now I have my whole animation done here. The only problem is the character has like the actor has a different size of my character that I'm using here. So I will save my file as a patrol. Save it. I can delete it now and use in any character that I want. Really, really amazing, really awesome fast, seamless, great connection. And now I'm gonna use the CAT, the Character Animation Toolkit, which is another toolkit that we have inside 3ds Max, in order to bring the motion capture files using CAT. So CAT has a different workflow. I have to create a new animation layer inside CAT, an absolute work animation layer, and open the file. So CAT works with BVH, exactly the same as Bypad, and XSense export BVH too. So I'm gonna look for my documents, whoa, my documents, my motion capture files that I got from XSense, and I have here, for example, the patrol again. I will open it and say, okay, please upload the motion capture from XSense inside CAT. What CAT is doing is recreating all the hierarchy, all the bonds, all the sensor that Access uses and adding inside 3ds Max. We have just to wait a little because he's recreating it in the same size that the actor is. If the actor is something like, I don't know the size here in the United States, but in meters, it's really like one meter and 70 centimeters, for example, he's gonna be like really tall. It depends on the, on the character I have here inside my 3ds Max. I will have to retarget the animation from the actor inside a different kind of actor. Once it's done, right now, it's just done. Check it out. Here's my character with the proper size, which is much bigger than I expected. I have to download and uh, downsize it to reduce his size. Just scale down. Leave it like this. Now we can adjust the same rotation from the hands just to leave it with the right rotation because 3ds Max couldn't recognize it. And I will turn it off the human IK, the inverse cinematics for my feet. So I've got the same result for cat. So I got cat biped and Maya covered with accents. Beyond that, I, I, I have shown the, a new feature inside Maya, which is how to create your own skin and fix it using the Delta Deformer inside Maya, which is a really fast, really cool way to, you know, fixing skin, which is a really tough uh, task inside any pipeline production. I will select all my bones and my geometry. So I will begin doing ice skin here. I will say rigging, skin, and on purpose, on purpose, I will do a bad skin. Why is that? Because I want to show you guys how can we fix skin in a really fast way, really artistic way. I don't want to get into the skin painter and start painting all the vertex and doing the blends and the weights of the vertex. I want to have like a tool that I can fix automatically for me. So I will decrease the resolution of my skin to 256. We're using voxel skin, which is a technology to create really fast and beautiful skin. I will create it. It's just done. And let's see the result from my bad skin that I told you I was supposed to create. Look. So this skin is not good to be used. I need to fix it. So I will fix using the new tool called 
it's in rigging, to form Delta Mush. What Delta Mush does is it tries to fix and smooth the mesh, look, the best it, it can do. So I will select my mesh here and look for my Delta Mush tool and I will say, okay, I can increase, enhance the, the, the result from my Delta Mush. I will say I want it to be 20 iterations and now I'm gonna show you without Delta Mush and with Delta Mush. Without Delta Mush and with Delta Mush. Check it out. One click only, one tool that solved my problem of the skin. Beautiful skin, bad skin. With one tool, the deformation. Sometimes when we do a skin, maybe when we create a Delta Mush deformer in my skin, I can bug some parts of my mesh that was previously good, but Delta Mush can fix some parts, but it can mess other parts. So I can have like a Delta Mush painter and fix the Delta Mush, I mean, remove the Delta Mush. So I can come into my mesh here and try to take it out. Check it out. So I don't want a Delta Mush here. I don't want a Delta Mush here, for example. And if I can show you the difference between with Delta Mush, without Delta Mush again, look. My knee remains the same. So I have removed the Delta Mush and I have a beautiful skin ready to be used for motion capture. So all motion capture done with the access, access device, access motion capture can be done inside 3ds Max and Maya seamless, seamless and without the need any other software. All right, thank you very much for watching. Hope you like it.